Hello, we're back here at IMAX Live, and we're so excited to have Andy Sharp with Song Division here today. And I was just telling him that last week I was at the Experiential Marketing Summit, and I said they had the best karaoke booth, and it seemed to be partnered by Song Division, and he said it was... It was not Hi, Lindsay. Oh, uh, hi. She did ask me if I was about to sing for everyone, and I John am, Mayer I'm cover band, singer. guys. It's going to be great. I'm not a singer. We have amazing singers, but it's not me. Uh, we had, at, at EMS in Las Vegas, we had, uh, we were doing Insta hits. And an Insta hit, which we're also doing in the taxi stand for IMAX. So we're IMAX's uh, really? music partner. We're doing, we're, doing the, we're doing all the entertainment for the gala dinner pr- tomorrow night, which okay. is a full band with, uh, you know, amazing musicians. Rue, who's a backup singer for Florence and the Machine. So mm-hmm. that's a, you know, full band experience. But then we do, on the smaller end of things, we do Insta Hits, where you have one or two musicians, where they will, it's, I guess, instead of a photo booth. Mm-hmm. So if you, they'll, they'll ask you four or five questions. You know, who are you? Who do you work with? Why are you here? You know, what, what, and we do it for brands, basically. And then the musician will write you a song in three minutes. So it's an insta hit. That's very cool. Yeah. Well, there was a guy with a tambourine, and everybody wanted to be with the guy with the tambourine, and we couldn't tell. So it was one of those things, especially, I mean, as you would expect at an experiential marketing event. Very big, very loud, but it was nice to come to this show and watch the contrast. We were at the Edge of Monday happy hour last night, and there was just a guy in the corner with the guitar with the music at the perfect level for conversation, being able just to bring the room together through song. He was great. That was Luke Higgins. Uh, who's a, has a, he was the John Mayery oh, guy. Yeah. He has a he has a <laughs> he has a beautiful voice. He just got off tour with he's Kylie Minogue's guitar player. Nice. So yeah, so he he was just playing at lunch as well, okay. and then yeah, and then all the musicians come together and they're the band for tomorrow night. Very nice. But yeah. Well, let's back it up a little bit. Tell us a little bit about what is Song Division and why won't they let you sing? Uh, Song Division won't let me sing because they've heard me sing. Mm. So it's so I started the company in two thousand and three, uh, and I um, it, it was it was. I have a background as a, as a musician, as a songwriter and a guitar player and keyboard player, uh, but was never a singer. I, I will sing demos for, for if I'm writing a song and, and I get some amazing singers to come and sing, sing the actual song for me. But uh, I, I started the, the company when I was asked to... to I was originally asked to do uh, songwriting workshops with Indigenous teenagers in Australia for a, for a festival mm-hmm. where I'd get about 15 teenagers uh, for an hour and we would write a song and they would have varying levels of music, Some, sometimes no musical experience, sometimes I'd play a bit of guitar and, and uh, I would just ask one of the kids if he knew a few chords on the guitar and then we'd ask the rest of the group what what's type of song do you want to write and they'd say we want to write a reggae song with a gangster rap <laughs> breakdown because that's what <laughs> they liked. And so, and then I'd just get the kids to write poems basically right. and then we'd, you know, create a song together. And then I was asked um, straight after that by a friend who, who runs a telco in Australia. Mm-hmm. I said, can you do that with my sales team? And I was like, I, I am not a team building guy. <laughs> I, I, I'd, I'd spent 10 years playing in a sign I was signed to ACDC's, ACDC's label over in the UK during Britpop. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and then when that band broke up, I ended up working, came back to Australia and worked for IBM right. for 10 years. So I have a... That's the, the business is sort of formed on this sort of, you know, music and corporate. That's, that's why we're in this world. Right. Uh, but so my friend asked me to do a team building event and I was like, I'm not, I'm not really a song and dance guy. I don't, I'm not a singer. I'm not a campfire, pull out the guitar guy. You like to bring them together but not to make a movie Not to shake. make that, no, exactly. <laughs> so, but I, I said I'll take them into a recording studio and I'll bring in some of my session friends. Right. Uh, and some beer. And, you know, we, we wrote a, a song about their sales targets and I couldn't get them out of the studio after that. They were all like a, they were in a sort of teenagers in a garage band delusional, <laughs> we're going to be we're gonna be famous. And, uh, and so that's where the business started from there in 2003. And so now we do, we have, we've worked in 30 countries and we do about, you know, 400 events a year and uh, we have teams across Australia, Asia, UK uh, and the Americas uh, about to launch in South Africa. Um, and we do everything from, we basically get brought in for corporate events, whether it's a, a, a general session for 10,000 people or a, 
VIP experience, strat- you know, strategy session for 20 people. We'll take people into a famous recording studio or we'll get, you know, like I said, 10,000 people to write a song in between keynote speakers at a, a general session. So it's, it's, we, get, we get asked to design musical experiences that unite people around their purpose using, y- using music. Yeah. So what would you say is probably the hardest thing? Because I know we'd had you on event icons before, way back when we started. You had Sam. Sam, Right. And so, you know, the the title of the session, I think, was taking your events to the next level. And there's been a lot of changes in the way that everyone says we don't create events now, we create experiences. And I think music's really at the core of that, but it's so tough to get right because it's always too loud or seems forced. So what would be the one tip you'd pass along to event professionals as they're thinking about creating these experiences using a company like yours or just using music? Yeah, I mean, well, if they're just using music, I mean, a, a tip, you know, when you're saying it's too loud or is it the wrong sort of music is, you know, find, find people on your team or with the client that are in touch with who who the employees are and I, I always sort of think go, go for someone who's the middle of the demographic so mm-hmm. if you've got a, a, a workforce that ranges from you know 20 to 60 find a 35 year old who likes their music so they know their rolling stones and doors and whatever but they also right. know who drake is and and whatever and and you know ev- everyone loves music you just don't want to go into a situation and be playing all dubstep to the, the wrong audience. Um, so I think tr- trying to find people who are, you know, and I think people like good music. I mean, one, one of the things that we do when we're curating playlists for companies is, or, or even doing sort of maybe background music for a gala dinner with a band, we'll get the band to play classic rock songs, mm-hmm. so like, or even like Metallica or Nirvana, but they'll play it in a salsa rhythm Metallica and a salsa. In a, yeah which is sort of gets done in, in various you know I think very recently is be- was sort of popular in the US anyway where they'll do that sort of thing sort of famous songs in a you know like a, a 1940s sort of jazz style but right. it's basically I mean I you can go to any corporate event and they're going to play the latest top 40 whether it's a you know um Justin Timberlake or, you know, I remember there was a period where for the only, you know, the, the same Black Eyed Peas song was played right. at every general session and to play every speaker on stage. And right. so that's, you know, I think, I think you've just got to be a bit more adventurous than that. I mm-hmm. think people, you've got to, you've got to um, d- don't dumb it down for people. Yeah. Um, but know your audience, know what the demographic is and then just be a bit interesting with it. You know, play something that they're not necessarily hearing every day because he- whatever they're hearing on the top 40 they're going to hear on every sports promo reel and they're hearing it all the time and so it's not it's not special for your event so i mean so we get brought in to get the audience to they create their own music so that and you know music is is tied to memories so in a year's time when someone says what what did you remember about that event that we know that they remember the song that they wrote with us but they don't necessarily remember what the keynote speaker was talking about so that's so we're we're brought in because people are spending a lot of money on getting everyone together and then music music you know releases serotonin and releases endorphins uh, that make people social and then when they're writing a song it helps them sort of retain the content but i you know i think it goes to the same as if they're going to pick their own music like pick pick music that's a little bit more interesting right. um that people will remember yeah. yeah all right what's the one experience that song division's doing here at imax that we shouldn't be missing if we're here in frankfurt well if you if you are lucky enough to be invited to the gala dinner mm. or rich enough to get a ticket to buy a ticket um <laughs> you, i mean you're going to see an amazing ba- you know they they're the best some of the best musicians on the planet and, and you know we played it last i think we played it a few years now it's a fir- i haven't been for about 6 years but it's a great band getting the dance floor filled but if you if you're not going to be at the gala dinner go and get yourself an insta hit in the taxi rank Love i think it. i think we're doing that each day all right yeah. well that's something to look forward to thanks again we appreciate thanks it andy me, thanks for everyone listening at home and we'll see you soon thanks everyone